Hey, hello everybody. This is problem number seven from homework set number seven. I'm going to read you the problem. Uh, number seven. Mountain climbers with masses little m and big m are roped together while crossing a horizontal glacier when a vertical crevasse opens up under the climber with mass big m. The climber with mass little m drops down on the snow and tries to stop by digging into the snow with the pick of an ice axe. Alas, this story does not have a happy ending because this does not provide enough friction to stop. Both Little M and Big M continue accelerating with Big M dropping down into the crevasse and Little M being dragged across the snow, slowed only by the kinetic friction with coefficient mu sub k acting between the axe and the snow. There is no significant friction between the rope and the lip of the crevasse. And part A asks us to find the acceleration. And if you notice, it's going to be in symbols so everything there's no numbers here but we do have we can assume that we're gonna be able to use little m big m the acceleration due to gravity and the coefficient of friction between this guy and the snow so i'm gonna draw first a diagram and so i might have drawn it too close to the top of the page here's little m and there's a rope that goes over to big M. And I'm going to start by looking at all the forces on both of these guys because since we're looking for the acceleration we're probably going to use Newton's second law F equals MA in order to connect from the forces to the accelerations. So on the guy that's hanging over the cliff, big M, there's two forces that are acting which are the weight and is normal or the tension in this rope not a normal force a tension and the weight of this guy is going to be big m times g and the weight that's on the little m is going to be little m times g and if i want to make them different maybe i'll make a, a little big m and little m down here just to be clear about which one is which but what is the same is the tensions that they experience are going to be the same. So that's actually what comes from this part of the problem that says uh, there is no significant friction between the rope and the lip of the crevasse. So that translates to saying, well, there's no friction right here. And so the tension that this rope is experiencing is going to be the same all throughout the rope. So that the tension, the number that we have over here is going to be the same as the number that we have over here. Beyond these two forces, we also have a normal force. And because there's no acceleration up or down, the normal force is going to be mg. Right, it's doing sum of forces equals zero. And then we also have force of friction. And the force of friction, we know that the force of friction is going to be equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. If I write that a little bit clearer. So the force of friction is going to be mu k times n, which is going to be mu k times m g. Okay, so the other key part to this is that there's going to be an acceleration that both of these guys are going to experience. And these, this guy's going to experience an acceleration going down and little m will experience an acceleration to the right. And because we're going to assume also that this rope is not stretching, so if this guy moves one meter, for example, this one's going to move one meter to the right, and therefore if they're moving in the same, you know, synchronously, but just in different directions, then the accelerations will be the same. That's because the changes in the, in the positions will be identical, which means that the velocities will be identical, which means that changes in velocity, which is acceleration, will also be identical. So that's a justification for using the same acceleration over here and over here, just in different directions, but the same number acceleration. Okay, so let us do sum of forces on each of these and write the F equals MA for each of them. So for, let's do this one first because it's it has less forces, it's easier. So for big M, if I write my sum of forces and if I take the upward direction to be positive, then I'm going to write that the tension 
minus the weight, which I'm going to write as mg, is equal to my mass times my acceleration. But my acceleration is going down, so it's this way. So I write a negative for the a. And this is just sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. And I'm doing this in the y direction. So this is what I get. And all right, well, let's look at what we need or what we see from from over here. Uh, sum of forces in the y direction for little m will just tells us that this weight and this normal force are the same. But if we do sum of forces in this direction, we get that. So say this is positive. So to the right is positive. So I'm going to write t and then minus my frictional force is equal to my mass times my acceleration a and this time it is positive because the acceleration is in the positive direction and if i substitute what i have for fk then t minus mu k mg is equal to ma so we're looking for a and we we know or we assume that we know everything here, that we know g, that we know the little m, we know the big m, that we know mu sub k, but we don't know t, right? It's not given to us in the problem. So it would be nice if we can have a solution where that cancels out. So what we can do is we can take this one, and I'm going to write little m. This is to clarify that this is an equation for little m, this is an equation for big m. Okay, so I want to substitute uh, an expression for t into one of these. So I'll, I'll solve for t over here. And that'll, you can get that by adding capital MG to both sides. So t is going to be equal to, let me just write it down here, m negative m a, and I'm adding mg. I'm going to factor out the big M, g minus a. <clears throat> so this is the expression that I'll substitute over here m g minus a minus mu sub k m g equals m a then uh, okay so I want to take I want to get acceleration by itself on one side so I'll, I'm just gonna unpack this anyway so there was really no point in factoring it out over here To write that out and then I want the a's uh, on there on one side so I'm going to add this term to both sides I factor out an a And over here, we can factor out the g. So we'll put g m minus mu k little m. And I can divide both sides by this factor. I'll write this over here. So a on its own, I'm going to write this on the left hand side and then this on the right hand side is equal to g and then up here we have m minus mu sub k little m and down here we have m plus m which matches exactly what we have right here so this is our expression this is part a if we look at part b part b says Check the dependence of your equation on the variables. That means that for each variable, you should determine what its effect on a what its effect should be physically, and then what your answer from part A says its effect would be mathematically. So we have, I think, four variables. Yeah, we have little m, big M, g, and mu sub k. In here. So let's see what happens if we change them. Uh, for example, uh, g is going to be easy. So let's say g. If we were to have made 
gravity stronger, then th we would expect these guys to fall faster. Stronger gravity, you're going to fall faster. And so if g goes up over here, then acceleration is going to go up. So you're going to accelerate down faster. That makes sense. Um, let's look at the coefficient of kinetic friction. If we made the friction bigger, if this one went up, for example, then we would expect to fall down slower. And so when we look at the equation, mu sub k right here, mu sub k, if we make this bigger, then overall we're gonna, it has a negative in front in this factor. So this overall number is gonna get smaller, and that means that the acceleration will be smaller. And in fact, if mu sub k is big enough so that the product mu k little m, if mu k little m matches big M, then we're not even gonna fall at all. Right, so that's the situation when we get to zero here, we have zero acceleration, and that would be, um, that's either not moving or moving at a constant velocity. But that means that if you were able to stop moving, you wouldn't have to accelerate. So that would be the condition for not falling. And then if we look at the m's individually, we're gonna get a similar uh, conclusion where if we make the big guy, or the big m, not the big guy, the big m, Guy who's hanging down here, if we make his mass bigger, then it's more likely that the acceleration is going to be uh, a lot. And that makes sense, right? If this is bigger, then the acceleration is going to be bigger. The denominator gets bigger too, but this ratio over here also gets bigger. And then finally, if we make the little m big, then eventually, once again, making this one big, eventually it'll be enough to overcome the weight of big M and might allow us to not fall down. All right, I think that's everything for this problem. And just to recap, the biggest, the trickiest parts are connecting the tension that's going on down here with the tension that's over here. The reason we can do that is because we assume that at every single point in the rope, the tensions are the same. So this rope over here experiences that tension to you this way and that tension to you this way over here it's experiencing tension to you this way tension to you that way and that travels all the way through until it gets to the other object if there were friction along this then we would have to account for that and you wouldn't have uh, equal bits and there would be different tensions the other part is knowing that the accelerations are equal and that allows you to solve the overall problem awesome